Hi, I'm Nick, and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at fixing old photographs. Now, I'm, I'm sure if you are anything like me, you have loads of old prints lying around from the pre-digital era, and quite often you might want to scan those in or re-photograph them or, or get them onto a computer somehow. And when you do that, you discover that the, the print quality is, uh, is quite low, or the prints have become damaged, there are spots on them, scratches, or the, the colours have gone crazy. And here, in this tutorial, we'll be looking at how you can get the best out of those, out of those pictures using the GIMP. Okay, so the first thing I will do is load up some pictures I scanned with a variety of different problems. Quick tip here, um, if you want to load multiple images into GIMP, when you have the uh, dialog open, if you hold down the control key, you can select multiple files and it will open them all in different windows. Okay, so you see the other ones have loaded behind there. Right, the first picture we're going to look at is this rather fetching family photograph. Someone isn't too happy. Oh, that's my brother. Um, now one thing that can happen with old photographs is that the quality of the, of the colors changes, or the, the colors themselves change due to the, the chemical nature of the, of the prints. Now this one isn't too bad, and it may be difficult um, depending on the, the quality of your display and the encoding of the video to, to tell um, in this particular tutorial. But I'm going to show you the, the sort of things that you can do with a GIMP to fix colors anyway. Um, the first port of call is the color balance. Now, this has three options, shadows, midtones, and highlights, and three sliders to adjust between cyan and red, magenta and green, and yellow and blue. Now, quite often in these old photographs, and I'll, I'll start with the shadows, I think. Quite often in these old photographs, the colors tend to shift conveniently to the left of these sliders, to cyan, magenta, and yellow. Um, so we can usually fix them just by increasing red, green, and blue. Blue, not quite so much. And you can say that looks better on my screen already. Um, another option, or an additional option, is to use the hue and saturation control, which you'll find in the, in the same color menu. It's the second item down there. Now this controls a, a color shift around the wheel of colors, if you like. And quite often, pictures can be fixed by moving this slightly to the right again. And not too much. Now, if your picture takes on a, an unreal sort of color quality, you can tone down the saturation a bit as well. Uh, with this bottom slider. And then we have a, a fixed picture. Like I say, this now looks fine on my screen. Yours may vary depending on how the colors are set up. So that's fixing colors. And there is no sort of magic recipe for that. You really do have to tweak with the sliders until it, until it looks right. But it, it's a fairly simple operation. So save that one. And... I'm saving this out as a PNG. You can use any format you like. Okay, and while that one's saving, we can move on to the next one. Now, just a couple of seconds for the dialog to clear the screen. Now this one is, is quite typical of an old black and white uh, photograph. Depending on the paper used and the, and the chemicals, and th this one was taken uh, in the 60s sometimes, Depending on the paper used, quite often, and how the picture is stored, quite often the black fades to a sort of browny grey, um, and you lose detail in the, in the picture. Now, 
one thing we can immediately do is switch to grayscale because this is a black and white picture you see that option is in the image mode if you've scanned in in color you probably want to convert the image to grayscale if it's black and white it makes things a bit easier now you might look at this and think well there's there's not much we can do with that but actually these these sort of photographs are the easiest to fix and if I look in the color menu again and choose curves okay now this graph shows where the range of values in the in the image are to be found you can see they're all clumped in the middle so what effectively we want to do is increase the contrast now you can just adjust contrast from the color menu but that it's a fairly uh, broad brush tool um, with the color curves or the black and white curves in this case you can get a much more fine-tuned adjustment so what I'm going to do is just bring up the white level white levels are at the at the right hand side of the graph if you like and the darks are on the left hand side you can see the from the scales on the on the graph and what we want to do is effectively make the top part of this area be white and the bottom part be black so we'll end up with a classic sort of S shape with the range of values now going from black to pretty much white and you might want to tweak this a bit depending obviously GIMP gives you a, a live update so you can see the picture changing as you move these points around that shirt is a, is a little bright so you might want to move it that way a bit I think it was probably overexposed in the original photograph but you can see already how much how much extra detail has been brought out in that photograph and that was a really simple operation so I'm going to uh, I'm going to select that I mentioned uh, the brightness and contrast like I say you can adjust adjust it here but you usually get a lot more fine control if you use the curves okay so I won't bother saving that one because it took too long before okay now our final problem which you will undoubtedly come across are these sorts of marks scratches spots that looks like it a stray hair that didn't belong to the dog and <clears throat> some of these can be easy to fix and some of them can be tricky to fix unfortunately most of these ones are quite easy to fix so the first thing we should do is zoom in on the problem area a quick tip for you if you have a, a mouse with a wheel on it hold down control and scroll the wheel up and you will zoom in now this spot obviously isn't supposed to be here GIMP has a tool the healing tool you'll find it here it looks like a couple of plasters uh, in the in the icon in the toolbox if we select that it has the same sort of options as the the clone tool and when we move the cursor onto the image you'll see we have at the moment a, a sort of circle shape it's just a bit smaller than the spot if you want to change the size of that just adjust the scale slider get a bigger spot now what we need to do with this tool is first hold down the control key and select a an area of the image which is okay so that could be any of these bits and what it does is then it tries and makes whatever area of the image you then apply the tool to to be similar to the area that you've selected so if I just click on that spot you'll see like magic it disappears and 
if I find some more spots. They're gone. It is, it is quite magic. <laughs> now, sometimes, and I'll scroll out a bit again, zoom in on this strange hair. Sometimes it might not work quite so well as this, in which case you might want to use the clone tool itself which works in a very similar way and I'll just show you how that works. This is the clone tool, this thing that looks like a stamp. And what that does is it effectively copies one part of the image to another. So whatever is in the area that you control click on is copied to wherever you click. Now that can be useful for larger areas rips in the in the photograph funny scratches things like this where the healing tool might not work quite so well because the area affected is too large okay and obviously i could repeat that process on all of those spots and blemishes i could spend quite some time on this So those are the three most common problems with, with your scanned in prints. If you have any specific problems with pictures or image manipulation, please write into the PC Answers and we'll do our best to try and fix them for you. Thank you.